Venerable, thanks for explaining how breath works like wind in the meditation. I can enjoy this more if it happens. Yeah, if it happens. If it hasn't happened to you yet. Yeah, hopefully it will happen to you. But grace has still not given me the experience of witnessing of 36 categories in the body. Thanks for your wonderful wisdom. Uh, okay, I know who wrote this. I don't need to mention name. Um, it sounds in your words that you like to experience it. You have an attachment to like it. Let that go. You don't have to wait to experience that. It will come to you. You don't struggle for it. Oh, why won't I see my own body, internal body? When will I have this? When will I have that? If you set up an expectation, you're not at it. It would come to you without setting an expectation. As long as you work at it, that date will come. Uh, but if you, if you put a, your mind to st struggle for it, maybe a problem. Because if you set up a mind to struggle for it, like, it's just like, if you work, I'm giving you an example in daily life. If you are doing a job, um, if you have that mind of, I got paid my basic salary of $12 an hour now, for example. I want to get to that $36. I want to struggle for it by all means. There's one person like that, then another person is. I. I got paid for my basic salary now, but I'm gonna work hard at it. I'm gonna prove that I can work hard, I can achieve the goals my employer has given me. You see the difference between the two? One is attached to the struggling, and in the process of attached to the struggling, he is so much struggling for it that he could struggle at the expense of hurting others, stepping on people's back, trying to climb up the, the echelon, the management echelon, the, or the workers are trying to climb up that ladder by, by all means, because you attach to struggling and winning for it with an egoistic attitude. Whereas here, you just want to give. I want to give out. In that process, you can do it more linearly. You can do it more naturally. You can do it without attachment. These are the kind of people who, are, who will be more happy. Because you do it without attaching a condition to it. You just want to do it. You, you get paid $12 an hour now, but I work as very hard that as if, as if I'm worth $36. Because I'm very conscientious, I'm very hardworking, and I always put my mind in what I'm working. And I always get along with people. This is my natural response to it, that I want to achieve it. You tend to be more successful in that way, without stepping on people's back, without, without, stepping, without hurting other people. Because you, have, you don't have an egoistic struggling for your self-efforts attitude to it. So don't try to look for that state where you can see the internal organs of your body in your meditation. It will come to you if it comes to you. You don't have to look for it. If you look for it, it's not right. But it will come. It will come to you. Okay, next question. There will be a free refuge and five precepts ceremony held in our temple on December 30th uh, this year. How do I know I'm ready to attend and become a Buddhist officially? Thank you. The feeling will come to you naturally. You feel that, oh, I've been learning the Buddhist teaching and I feel that that's my path. I'm determined that's the path that I'm going to take. And um, in order to show my determination that is my path, 
I'm going to do something. I'm going to take refuge under the Buddha. Taking the refuge under the Buddha, that means you're trying to learn what the Buddha is teaching. I'm going to, I'm going to go that way. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to t make that first step on the path of spiritual awakening until I walk to the, to the destination and I will follow the Buddha's teaching. You're determined to do that. Whereas if you don't take any refuges, you say, okay, I don't have to officially register. I mean, I, I just believe it and, and I don't have to be, uh, to be obligated to do it. I, 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 don't, I don't feel a sense of responsibility. It's, I'm, I don't want to be baptized. You know, you're not, it's not a baptized situation. If I can give you an analogy, if you go to UBC, if you're really serious, you will try to write the entrance examination and register as an as a official student university to be at that university. You want to register as a student. Here's another guy who says, I don't need to register. I just, I just become an attend, uh, attendee. Uh, I just go and, and, and just listen. And uh, I don't have to register. I just sneak in and listen to whoever is talking. There's a difference in the two types of students. The first type of student is a registered, official, determined student. Another is, he's not registered. Sometimes he can attend lectures and sometimes he don't have to attend lectures. There's a difference in these two kinds of students. The first kind of students, official registered students, they have to buy the textbook, they have to make notes, they have to attend lectures, they have to listen carefully because they have to write examinations. They're really serious about it. Whereas this student is, could be lazy. I, I woke up 9 o'clock in the morning, oh, today is raining. Oh, there's a lecture at 9.30? No, 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 maybe I should stay for another one hour. You're not serious. You don't have to do your homework. Your homework doesn't have to be marked by a tutor. You don't even have to write the examination. You have no obligation. You know who would be more successful student? You tell me. Who would be a better or more successful student? I don't, have, I don't have to draw a conclusion for you. You know in your mind. You know in your mind who would be more successful. And also, you know what the five precepts are? Abstain from killing, abstain from lying, abstain from taking intoxication, abstain from uh, sexual misconduct, abstain from alcoholic addiction. These are the five basic precepts that a Buddhist uh, who taught refugees under the Buddha would like to take. In becoming a true, I don't want to use that word Buddhist, because that's just a name. And the name itself, it, it's, it's just a name. If I practice according to the Buddhist teaching, I don't want to call myself a Buddhist. It's, it's good enough. You can call yourself A or B or C or D. It does not matter. Names does not matter. It's what you're practicing. Um, but to, in order to practice what the Buddha taught, you must know um, your first step is to purify your mind. So in other words, you're doing meditation every day, you, you're doing meditation every, every Saturday, you're coming to the to a Buddhist temple at Richmond, and you're doing meditation. You, you, come, here for, you, come, you can't come here for two hours, and you like meditation. But once you go out, you're always addicted to drinking, intoxication, you always have a relationship in sexual misconduct, you always lie, you always steal. You're not, you're building up bad karma. How can it help your meditation? In following the Buddhist teaching, the first step is what? Stay away from bad deeds. Because if you do bad deeds, you will involve with bad karma. If you're all covered up with bad karma, with bad energy, how can you even start to practice meditation? You must know what is right and what is wrong. If you don't even know what is right and what is wrong, how can you pra practice the Buddhist teaching? I may say, I don't know what is right and what is wrong, but the Buddha said, Killing is not right. Not killing is right. Hurting others is not right. Taking the, the life of another person, under the animal, of, of an animal is not right. So there's certain criteria in not involving with bad karma. 
So for taking these five precepts, a necessary step in following the Buddhist teaching. And we call it what? To follow the sila. The sila, S-I-L-A, sila. The sila is to teach you basic wrong and right. In other words, you have to have a morality standard to be, to be a wholesome individual. And the Buddha said, you start from being good first. Don't talk about going a high level of meditation where you every day you're involved with drinking, alcohol, sexual misconduct, stealing, lying. How can you do meditation if you're like that? But there are people who are like that. There are people who involved with meditation, they're doing all kinds of bad deeds. So judging whether this is a good meditator or not, sometimes it's not just looking how they sit, how they cross their leg. What do they do? What is this behavior? Look at from a third person. This, this person is going to be my meditation teacher. What is this behavior? You know, you know. Sometimes we always say in a, in, in, in a Chinese sutra, we know the standard of certain uh, practitioners' meditation is not from what he told you. Is from what you observed. If here's a person is always egoistic, is always want to say, I want to have this, I want to have that, or you know, you know that if that person is always stay away from greediness, hatred, anger, he wouldn't get angry, he has a high level of endurances and tolerance, he's always merciful, he's always compassionate, he's always helpful, he's always um, you know, performing good deeds to others. I don't need to see how he crosses his legs. He is a good meditator. Words can be flowery. I can use all kinds of words to tell you I'm good, I'm good. But they don't mean a thing if you cover up your conduct. We want to see your conduct. We want to see your inherent nature, not your appearance. Your appearance could be cheating. Don't judge a book by the cover, by this cover. It's the inside. Next question. Please explain the, the meaning of the prayer set before the meal. Oh, uh, it's offering to the Buddha, to the Bodhisattvas, to all enlightened beings before we eat and thankful for what, what we've got. What we've got is the result of many efforts. We have donors who donated this food to us. We have people who cook for us. And if we trace the causes further, we have farmers who plow the land. We have shippers who ship the food. And we have all kinds of people involved in this meal. And finally, we have donors who are generous enough to donate money to offer to everybody. So, saying the prayer is not just the words and the musical instrument and how, it, how, how, how nice it, how, how, seren how much serenity your chanting would give you. It's the reason behind it. We want to appreciate the food given. By appreciating, showing gratitude on what is given to you, you know how to give to others too. Of course, there are people who always like to receive. We have people here who always eat and eat and eat and they never donate anything. They just come to eat. There are people like that. But there are people who, who want to give all the time, who want to support, not just receive. So there's a difference in attitude of different people. The meaning of the prayer is to show gratitude and show respect to the food that we are taking in. And also we, we show gratitude to the servers. All these servers are volunteers. They've been volunteering here for 25 years. They don't receive any money. Every day they come here to serve food. You are sitting there, but they wait till you, you have finished your eating, then they go back to eat. They're not your servant, you know, they're not our servants. They are just volunteers who like to give out and they don't have 
a lot of money to give out, so they give out their action, their behavior. Some people have been coming 25 years giving out. And yesterday, he bought everybody cakes. You know, in, in, in addition to giving out his service, her service, she also is giving out you know, bits and pieces of cakes and food all the time. And he's been here for 28 years. And how did he come here? He's, he's 82, 82 years old. And, it, and her, she is 82 years old, and her husband is 85. And the couple always travel by bus to the temple every day. And the husband stopped at Richmond Center, and then the husband, the husband, 85 years old, started to room about in Richmond Center, you know, taking coffee, and wait until 3 o'clock. And then the wife, after being a volunteer for the whole day, would go back to Richmond Center, meet the husband, and together they would go home. So the husband has been in Richmond Center for the whole day, but he takes, he takes delight in going around, you know, in Richmond Center. It's big enough. And he, he can have lunch in there. He can talk to different people. They have been doing that for many, many years, every day. You want to know the lady? I can introduce that lady to you. <laughs> but she may be, she, 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 she's shy. She, she does not want people to know about it. Skinny one. Huh? Skinny one. Yeah. What? The skinny one. The, skinny the one. most skinny one. Yeah. Very skinny one. Oh. And uh, yeah, yeah, the skinny one. And uh, the, 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 the husband is waiting there for the whole day. But that's good, as she said, that's good exercise for my husband. Because the husband is always good walking around, drinking coffee, and sometimes at, at, at 2 o'clock, a cinnamon bun. And then uh, 12 o'clock, maybe have a little bit of you know, food at, in the food court. And the wife is doing volunteering in here. And there are not just her, there are many people who are like that. So show your gratitude, uh, not just the food, not, not, you know, it's just a lot of people contribute to it. Don't just take it. Everything is given, oh, it's free lunch, take it, no. Always want to return, want to give out. Okay, so that's, that's the meaning of the prayer. What language is the prayer set in? Is in Chinese, is in official Chinese language, which is Pu Tonghua, which is Mandarin, they call it. Cantonese is a dialect, it's a very popular dialect, especially in the south part of China. And the southern part of China have been open to the whole world much, much earlier than the northern part. So a lot of immigrants, a lot of settlers, early settlers went all over the place to different countries. Every country has Chinese, almost like, because they, they, they you know, they left the countries and go to many, many parts of, of, of the world. And most of them were Cantonese. That's the reason why Cantonese has been very popular in uh, North America, in Europe. But, but the official language is Mandarin, which is Putonghua. And uh, it's not entirely different. The written words are, are very similar. The spoken words are not, not the same, but, but uh, uh, not the same, but it's easily, it's easily uh, people can learn both. It's not that difficult. If you start it now, really, you, you're really working at it every day. You spend two hours every day to learn the language. After three years, you can speak very well. I know friends who, who spend three years at university taking courses, Chinese courses, and three years later when I, when I met him again, He's so fluent that I thought, have you been chi living in China for, a while, for quite a while? No, no, I'm just taking a course at university. So take, if, you, if you're interested in the Chinese language, take a course. It's not that difficult. Don't let them scare you. It's not that difficult. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's quite easy. And don't think that age is a limitation in learning it. There's no limitation. And there's a ground for speaking it. Come Saturday in here. Then you can talk about, you can speak Chinese in here.
people who like to join in the taking the ceremony, the free re, the free refuges and the five precepts, you have to register. Um, maybe you register with San, uh, Sister San Ru. Huh? You can register with her. Can you stand up, please? So give give her your name and then your phone number so that you know we know who who you are. Then you come for uh, for the free refuges and the, the, five, the five precepts. You can actually get into, into, into internet to find out the meaning of the three refuges and the, and, and the, the five precepts.